When compositing in Affinity Photo, usually you have your subject and your background on separate layers so you can exactly decide the composition of your image. Now let's say you shot a picture and you're really happy with the background but you're not happy with the composition. You don't want to crop it in. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change the composition of your image without cropping. So recently I got an email from Robert who is one of my subscribers and he asked a specific question about a tutorial that I made a few months ago. And in this tutorial I basically changed the composition of a single image. So as you can see this is the end result but the original picture is this one. And if you look at the background you can see that the background doesn't move at all just the boy moves now he wants to know how to replicate this effect so that is what i'm going to show you in this specific tutorial how to change the composition of a single image now because this image comes from envato elements i cannot really share it i'm not allowed because it is a paid subscription so i found another image which is this image right here and i'm gonna show you the exact same um, technique but then we're gonna move the chair instead of the samurai boy now one important thing the reason why this works so well on this specific image is because we've got kind of a uh, yeah the background is kind of similar all, all around our image so there's not too many details while well, you see the water and you see the sand but there's not too many details however behind this guy there is a tree so i did the same thing with this guy but you can see that if i move him you can see that it kind of there are lots of artifacts going on and that is because this tree right here where he was standing in front of is kind of too detailed for affinity photo to actually um, fill in or paint in accurately so you want to keep in mind like the background so for this image it would work perfect because it's very blurred for this image it works pretty well because we've got like a blurred background as well um, as you can see i could just move him and you don't really see anything but for this guy yeah it just doesn't work as well and that is because of the details in the background all right so here we've got the full picture and what i want to do first is create a selection uh, around our um, chair let's say so i'm gonna go to my toolbox and i'm gonna select the quick selection brush so i'm gonna decrease my brush size and i'm just gonna make a quick selection around this chair all right let's press q to enter quick mask mode you can also press this button in the uh, toolbar or tools panel and um, I'm going to hold Alt and just deselect some parts that I don't really need for my selection. So I'm not going to need this. I'm not going to need this. And just going to basically fine tune my selection wherever necessary. So you want to kind of make a good selection of your subject before you proceed. Oh. And this we're definitely not going to need and this is kind of fine um, because our subject is standing in the sand and the rest of our scene is also sand we can actually um, select a little bit of the base let's say of where our uh, subject is going to stand on that doesn't really matter so let's say i'm happy with my result so i'm going to press q again so leave quick mask mode and now i've got my selection what i want to do is i want to duplicate my selection onto a new layer so usually i would press command j but now i'm going to go to a layer and then click duplicate selection and you can see we've got our chair on a separate layer and i'm just going to rename this one chair now let's actually create a duplicate of our uh, original image because i want to show you what um, what the changes are and we're going to call this one background all right with my ex with my selection still active i want to expand or grow my selection you can either press command b on the keyboard um to uh, which is the keyboard shortcut but if you want to do it without you can go to select and then hit grow or shrink so let's do that and let's increase the selection let's let's zoom in a little bit and we're gonna increase the selection quite a bit so maybe with 18 pixels so we actually sample some pixels around our subject and we're gonna hit apply now what you want to do next is you want to in paint or fill this selection with the in paint 
Uh, and the in-paint basically means that Affinity Photo's algorithms are gonna search for pixels around your selection and try to fill it in with, um, yeah, whatever it thinks fits best. So we're gonna go to edit and then you can either go to fill or you can go to click in paint. So if we go to fill, it would have been the same because there's the in painting option right here. And then you want to hit apply and just wait for affinity photo to fill. Now it doesn't really look like anything happened and that is because we've got our chair uh, layer that we've duplicated in front of our background layer. So if I'm going to hide it, you can see that Affinity Photo did quite a good job in actually thinking or filling in these pixels for us. So let's deselect our selection which is this red X right in the top here. And now, if I'm going to show my chair once again and grab my move tool, I can actually move my chair around wherever I want and it kind of matches the surroundings. So let's say I want to have the chair right in the middle. And as mentioned, because we have this uh, sand texture at the bottom right here, our chair will look like it actually fits in this image right here. Now you can see there are some artifacts, so the in-paint tool or function of Affinity Photo isn't perfect. So if we want to clean up this, we could use the in-paint tool or we can use, uh, yeah, basically any other healing tool, but I'm gonna try to use the in-paint tool and increase my brush size a little bit. Make sure you've got your background selected. Go over it and yeah, this looks a little better. Here at the bottom as well, you can see that Affinity Photo um, copied this twig um, or root, whatever it is. I don't really like that, so I'm just gonna brush over these as well because I don't want, um, yeah, I don't want the viewer to know that I actually changed our um, composition, let's say. So I'm just gonna brush in here and there and just to, yeah, just to try to make it look more natural. Now you can also still work a little bit on the um, selection. So if I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on the thumbnail, you can see that we've got our selection right here. Um, if I want to make this a little better, I can create a layer mask and with a black brush. So let me grab my brush tool, create a very soft round brush and just gonna like soften the edge a little bit to make it blend in better with the um, the new surroundings or the new background. Now to uh, leave this isolated mode, I just click on any other layer. Now this image comes from unsplash.com. So if you want to practice this technique, I'll put a link to this image in the video description. I hope you find this trick as useful as I find it. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one.